Yeah, so I, like I told you, I, it's essentially my dream is always to be a doctor. Yeah. But I think that's what, you know, people start saying things. So if someone says yellow car, you'll see you'll start seeing yellow cars. So it was something like that. Go fire, 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 fire in studio. Because this morning we're joined in studio by Varushka de la Harp. Hey, but uh, we, she's commonly known as V, a lawyer turned marketing exec, former manager, marketing and digital and brand at NetBank Namibia. She started her new role as the head of marketing and communications at Babka Motos in May of 2022. And she's from, you know, Sokovmunt, nice there, has beautiful five siblings. Uh, v was born in South Africa to a South African mother, who's now a Namibian citizen, and a Namibian Greek father. And she was moved to Vinduk to pursue her studies after high school and she now uh, finished her B Juris and LLB at the University of Namibia and then she went on to pursue her postgraduate studies at the University of Cape Town and she specialized in digital marketing. Currently she is pursuing a master's degree in business intelligence and digital artifacts. Oh my gal is doing the things and she's doing so at the Brunel University of London and is about to resume also her MBA studies in 2023 how about V? You're booked, busy, and just <laughs> on your grind. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I, I'm, I'm just about to ask, where do you find the time before we get into anything else? I think um, you just make the time. We you all do. have the same 24 hours, but mm. it's literally up to you mm. in terms of how you manage that time. Yeah. So, yeah. You have such an interesting background. A Greek Namibian dad, yes. South African Namibian mom. Tell us a bit about your childhood. I know you already have five siblings, so big family. I am one of five siblings. Yeah. yeah. So um, basically, yeah, I grew up, well, born in Sokovunt. <laughs> my mom moved to Namibia, met my dad. You know, um, fell in love. Holy, so nice. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Jala. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I guess there is this history. Mm. I am um, the baby of my siblings. Ooh. Three older brothers, really big. Um, I think my eldest brother could be my dad. He's about yeah. 51 now. Wow. Yeah, and my mom had me quite late. So I always tell her, you're so lucky that yeah. I'm okay. So, so <laughs> in actuality, you could almost feel like you're an only child. Exactly. Because most of the kids, if they have left their nest, it's just you with all of your parents' attention. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. How was it like growing up in Sokop Munt, though? It was really fun. I mm. must say, um, my childhood, if I say my cousin, most of the time it's not my mm. cousin. Very little relatives, especially from my mom's side, mm. my dad's side as well. Um, but... It's just a community of people. Yeah. You know, your next door neighbor becomes your cousin, yes. or that's what you call them, um, older brothers, or you'll be like, that's my older sister, mm. but it's just mostly family, friends. I think a very close-knit and integrated community in Swakop. Um, also a bit of a bubble, if I can admit, mm. you know, because then when you come to Vinduk, it's like, it feels like you're in New York City, yeah. but it's just, I mean, Vinduk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but other than that, I can't complain. I mean, I've learned most of my values, you know, from the people around me um, outside of my house and also outside of my family. So I'm, I'm truly grateful for that. And growing up in that beautiful Swakop um, place, so that way it's like close community your biggest dream was what well to be quite frank with you I've always wanted to be a doctor huh. so much so that I once um, and I think this was my biggest hiding ever um, please I do not condone any violence <laughs> do not subscribe to <laughs> no please yes. um, but yeah I, I think uh, I am the way I am because of discipline back mm. in the day but yeah my biggest hiding was when I wanted to perform a okay. C-section. Yeah, yeah, I know. So you know like how kids were supposed yeah, yeah, to look yeah, yeah. at these videos. Yeah. So my mom and them had these, um, what do you call them, tapes that would go into the VCR. Yeah. And um, we we managed to watch one. I think I was like eight or seven, um, seeing how a C-section was performed. So mm -hmm. I tried to perform a C-section on my late uh, god sister. <laughs> she didn't die from that, God forbid. But I'm just saying, um, yeah, with a, with a broken tile behind the house so she wasn't no she wasn't cut to anything oh, it was just we're just yeah but it was play just pretend. in time my godmother just got me in time yeah. yeah so i used to get a lot of hiding so, so how did we then go to oh, i want to be a doctor to you know what i'm, I'm into marketing i'm in i'm a lawyer now yeah so i think um 
after completion of school, I still applied. Uh, South African universities got accepted. My dad died when I was 10. Oh, so I think my mom... Sense. Yeah, no, it's fine. Don't mm. worry about it. So my mom literally was the only breadwinner mm. back then. And then my brother right above me, um, he wrote so surprisingly for Namdep back mm. then, DBS Marine. Um, he, those two would be the sole providers for us. And yeah, applied, got accepted. My bursary came through too late. And um, my second op was law, mostly okay. because of of how my dad's will and, um, you know, t state was handled. So I was like, I want to be a human rights lawyer. If I can't yeah. be a doctor, the next best thing this is, is this. to fight for human rights. Yeah. yeah. We're still talking to V, um, growing up in Swagopmund. <laughs> almost, almost <laughs> cutting people wide open. <laughs> so we're going to hear more about the more kosher and, and wholesome part of the career path that she's taken now. Yeah. 99 FM, your inspiration station. Speaking to me of, of Erna, I was like, you know, yeah, now that you know, um, you're of Greek descent, am I properly even pronouncing your surname? Because I know a lot of times people tend to butcher surnames that they're not familiar with. So V just surprised. She's like, ah, however you want to go with it. <laughs> however you want to go with it. So we are speaking to Verushka de la Harp, <laughs> known as V, a lawyer turned marketing exec. And actually, guys, she's worked on several great, truly amazing Namibian projects she's worked on, the Namibian's Children Guide to the Bill of Rights while still at law school, uh, entertainment industry management for some local artists as well, a young professionals of Namibia campaign that sees the successful and dynamic Wambola sisters, which is Lioness and Gina Jean's career highlights in the Namibian context. There's the, the Ongos Valley Development Strategy and, you know, Ukume Winter Drive. Again, where do you find <laughs> the time? <laughs> Where? <laughs> and can you give us some? <laughs> I wish I could. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I feel I don't have enough time. But um, to be quite frank with you, I think it's something that not a lot of people shed light on when they do partake um, in these sorts of activities mm -hmm. is that somewhere along the line, you do... Um, I wouldn't say lack, but you spend more time on these things, which means something is not getting enough time, like yeah. family. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not proud of it, but I think back in the day, for me, it was just career-driven. Yes. Um, do, 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 you know, they'll always be there. But I think as I grow older, especially with my mom being yeah. 70, um, I've realized that it's not even worth it anymore, mm -hmm. you know. So I'd rather spread stuff out. If you asked me maybe three months ago, what does my plan look like? I think you would have been like, this is crazy. Yeah. This is absurd. Yeah. There's no way anybody could do it. So, yeah, I think I have scaled down in terms of, mm -hmm. of you know, sharing my time or making time for these sorts of stuff. But um, at the same time, if you want to achieve what you those objectives that you set for yourself, mm -hmm. you will make the time and you'll find the time. But most of all... Um, of late, I've, I've found a sweet spot in terms of balancing. Nice. Yeah. And how have you been managing to do that? Um, just th finding that sweet spot? Because I know a lot of times everything comes at once, then you get overwhelmed. And like, okay, I'm going on a break. And then you get a break. And then <laughs> yeah. th there's, there's a lot of inconsistencies in trying to figure it out. But mm. for you, what does a balance look like? Because balance looks different for different people. Definitely. So, yeah, for me is, you know, whereas I would say this year, I'm definitely commencing with my MBA. Yeah. I think I've delayed that and I let it roll over into 2023 as much as I sit to myself I, I usually am time bound so I set time in terms of by the age of X I should have this which is not necessarily healthy so my balance mm. speaks to um, going more outdoors you know making time for my mom where I would have been a weekend out from Jolo is no. now let's go to, to the street <laughs> they're calling you know let's go to Swakov yeah. you know bring my mom here mm. if not you know just family time take my nephews out, fly down to Cape Town to my brother. Yeah. That's more like a balance because at the end of the day, you know, life is not promised and tomorrow is not promised. So I'd rather that than, you know, crying for the next 10 to 12 years of my true, life. True, true, yeah. true, true. Your career pathway that you that you've have taken has it been intentional or has it been when you found things along the way that made you go oh okay then i can pivot here and there mm -hmm. how have you gone from i am you know now a lawyer i'm getting into marketing and even some of the posts that you've had in the companies mm -hmm. that you've worked for how has your that career um, pathway and decision been like for you yeah so i like i told you I, essentially my dream is always to be a doctor yeah. but i think that's what you know people start saying things so if 
someone says yellow car, you'll see you'll start seeing yellow cars. So it was something like that for me. But I am a very people's person. I care a lot about people. But I'm also very creative. So at school, I would always win best, um, best crafts yeah. project or whatnot. So that's always been there, I think. Um, mostly left-brained, but also my right brain is quite... Um, Profound. You know, exactly. <laughs> and... Um, so as I went about the law thing, I just realized that at the same time as I, as I am a people's person, I also care too much. So mm. the lines get blurred and I don't know where to draw a line in the sand in terms of this is work and this is you in your personal space right now. So I then, as I went along, I realized like, shoo, I actually am, you know, siding more with the marketing. I really liked it, you know, um, and I think I'm not... I mean, everybody's special. Your mom tells you you're special. Of course. But I think the way I think and both those two brains coming into play, um, you know, the rigid sort of analytical, you know, structured me versus the Hollywood me mm. in terms of thinking and concept, they just found like a nice marriage. And um, ever since then, I think then I became intentional. Yeah. Along the way, it was just like, oh, wow. Discovery has gone on. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually good at this. Let, mm. me, let me explore this. Mm. But then towards the end, now I'm very intentional about what I want to do. <laughs> and, it, and it shows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and finally, any career advice that you would have uh, for someone who's listening in right now? And life advice, because I liked how you said, you know, had you asked me a couple of years ago, it was just work, work, work. But now I understand, you know, the importance of family and, and the importance of, you know, loved ones in your life and still going after the passion projects that mm-hmm. I haven't given back to, to, to people around me. So someone who's listening in right now who's saying, okay, I want to do this, your advice in terms of career and life would mm-hmm. be? Well, yeah, just simply, I know people always talk about your purpose, your whatnot. Um, just break it down as to why you do what you do, yeah. you know. It's important to answer that question for yourself. The answer is not always going to stay the same, but mm. as long as you dig deep within yourself, um, you know, just always be content, um, but don't become complacent within your comfort zone. Always push yourself to be better, both in your personal life and your career. And sometimes we fail. Well, even more times we do, but I think that molds us into becoming these individuals and the best versions of ourselves. So for me, um, to everybody listening out there, anybody who would like to know, it's just, you know, keep evolving because Mm -hmm. change is the only constant in our lives. Mm -hmm. And without, you know, that, I don't think anybody would be where they are today. Thank you so much of you for coming. I can talk to you for like forever and hour and hour, (laughs) but I gotta let you go because you're a busy woman, clearly. (laughs) Gotta get that, uh, you know, that MBA, you know, <laughs> and everything on. So thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you so much, Sibo. And I'm wishing you a lovely, lovely day. Thank you. So keep evolving, she says. Marketing exec Varushka de la Hop was our royal hustler this morning. Royal Hustlers was proudly brought to you by Namdep Diamond Corporation. Good today, better tomorrow.